that's what I want. Okay. All right. So that was the the last 20, 20 years ish of Mesa. Um, so I want to talk about what's happened over in a little bit more detail. What's happened over the the last year in Mesa, and where we're going, kind of over the next probably not whole year, but maybe over the next six months or so. Um, I'm really bad at trying to predict where things will go in open source projects. It's like trying to predict the weather. <laughs> it's it's doomed to fail. Um, yeah. So what's what's happened since the last XDC? What's going to be in the in the next release? And um, you know maybe maybe a little bit after that. So last year at XDC we had just re released Mesa 804. Um, we had OpenGL 3.0 on some hardware, and we were roughly four years behind the spec-ish. Um, and that was the first, so so 8.0 was the first uh, GL version bump in Mesa in, in quite a while. I've got a chart later on of, of when when different uh, versions of OpenGL became available in Mesa. Um, so then after that, pretty shortly after XDC, we, re we released 9.0. 9 we had really hoped to release at XDC, but it just it just wasn't going to happen. So that added 3.1, a big pile of extensions from from some later versions. Um, that was when the the Clover OpenCL state tracker first became part of Mesa uh, in a release, and we were about three and a half years behind. So catching up. Uh, then this most recent February, we had 9.1, which had uh, OpenGL ES 3.0 support. Um, a small handful of new extensions removed some some crap that that nobody was using, um, and we were six months behind the release, the spec release, which was really a paper launch of ES 3.0, and we were one of the first three um, shipping implementations, shipping conformant implementations of ES 3.0. So that, as far as I know, was something that had never happened in Mesa history that, you know, the open source implementation was shipping at the same time as the first closed source. But now Brian's maybe going to look something up and correct me on that. It at least hadn't happened since very, very long time ago. Maybe OpenGL 1.1 .1 or 1 1.2 or something, which was like 94 or 95. <laughs> uh-huh. Okay. Okay. So, but that was a long... I, I remember 1.4, and that was a long time ago. <laughs> that was 10 years ago or something. Um, so we, we did a lot in the, in the last year. A lot of new functionality went in, and a lot of test, you know, more rigorous testing of things, and a lot of just general quality Im improvements um, throughout the entire code base. A um, lot of people at a bunch of different companies and private individuals did crap tons of work. It was it was pretty amazing. And actually now it occurs to me that maybe I should have collected up some statistics of commits and lines of code or something. And if Michael Larabelle were here, he'd he'd do that right now and, and have a Pharonix article before I'm <laughs> before my talk is over. But he's not here this year, so um, so in in addition to that, um, we made some sort of process changes in the project over the last year. Um, we had kind of previously been doing roughly six months cycles on major releases and had been trying to do those on a pretty strict uh, time basis. You know, every six months, whatever's ready is ready, and that's that's what we'll ship. Um, but it kind of, I'm a really terrible release manager, so none of our releases were on time because I sucked. <laughs> um, and what, what ended up happening was, as a bunch of cool things would get in the tree, the distros would want to ship that and give that to their customers, so they would give up on waiting for a, re a release and would just take some point of master, um, you know, I, random point. I mean, they weren't picking it randomly, but we had no insight as to what was, was getting picked. So as far as we were concerned as Mesa developers, it may as well have been random. Um, so, to, to kind of fix that, because um, that 
that sucks for everyone because then we get bug reports of oh Mesa 9.3 in you know such and such distro has has this issue well th there is no Mesa 9.3 what the hell are you talking about <laughs> um, so we, we're gonna try shifting to a a three month cycle which means that the releases will be a little bit more thin um, but will hopefully be frequent enough that distros won't have to just pull stuff off of master. Um, and I see Adam nodding, so so we, we, we have we have some approval for it. And, I, and I've talked to a few other people, and and assuming that it works, it it seems like it should make people happy. The one one issue that we haven't quite figured out how to deal with is what we would previously do is do five months of development cut a release branch and then do a month of stabilization. Um, if we've got a three month cycle, a month of stabilization is probably not gonna work out so well. Um, so it may take a couple of releases before we figure out exactly how to, how to play around with those timings and, and get, the, get that to, to work out well. Um, We've also changed our stable release and stable branch policies a little bit. We actually have a release manager who, way in the back of the room, Carl Worth, um, has taken over um, doing the, the stable releases and had, had done a fine job getting out a bunch of um, 9.1 releases. Um, rather than just marking patches with a note in the uh, commit message, um, we've started adding CCing them to a Mesa stable list, so they show up in the mailing list record, and then also, if a branch that or if a patch that isn't marked is later determined, oh hey, this fixes some bug that we want back in the stable release, someone can then nominate it by just sending it out to to that stable branch, and instead of sending me a message on IRC of oh hey, I forgot to mark this patch, can you put it in the next release, and relying on me to remember because I I, I won't. <laughs> Um, and this seems to be working out pretty well. Um, it's been a fairly small change in process. I mean, pe people are basically just replacing the note blah, blah, blah with CC stable. Um, we had a couple little quirks of that of what if you want a patch on the 9.1 stable branch and not 9.2 or vice versa. How do you, how do you mark that? But, but we came up with, a, or Carl and others came up with, with a way for, for dealing with that. Um, but Carl, isn't it isn't it time for nine dot two dot one? Bad choice. <laughs> um, so you know we've made a bunch of small kind of kind of course adjustments, and it seems seems to be working out okay. Um, so so where are we going from from here on over the next year? Well, to, to keep with our, our new three-month cycle, um, kind of tentatively just marking out the 9.2 release, walk forward three months is a release November 27th, which means we'll probably have to make the 10.1 branch right around the beginning of November. Um, stuff that I know that, that my team and some others are working on is finishing up the rest of OpenGL 3.3. Uh, the big thing that's missing there is geometry shaders, and Paul is probably sitting in the back of the room working on that right now, or, or maybe he's maybe he's taking a break from it because, huh? So the the big thing added for that well, so it'll be GLSL 3.30, which is required by by 3.3. And so the, 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 big, the big change in the, in the shading language is a bunch of stuff required to support geometry shaders. Pardon? Yeah. Here, someone, someone give him a mic. <laughs> we try to make this as difficult as possible. Too much complexity for a software developer, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. If I try to compile um, um, a 3.30 GLSL program with Mesa 9.2, it just tells me, no, it's not in right. there. So this is um, just a switch to, that has to be switched on, or is it? Yeah, basically, yeah. Um, we so could have done that independently. Well, so the problem is that 
and, and we had a lot of debates about this, mm -hmm. about um, whether we could expose the a version of the shading language past 1.40 without geometry shaders. Um, because the way that the spec is written, that geometry shaders are re is really tightly inter mm -hmm. intertwined with it. And so we kind of scratched our heads about, can we even do this? And if we do, is anyone actually going to want it? And is it, are they? I only say layout. Going, going to assume. Hmm? I say only say layout location. Um, that. Well, depending on what layout qualifiers you're using, that might be available through some other extensions that we that we support. But we should we should talk about that offline. I'm, I might be able to that help that you. That will be part of my talk as well. So oh, okay, yeah, okay. So we'll, I'll skip that. Yeah. Now. So so once the once, I, I think once once a driver checks the boxes for all of the extensions that are part of 330 and checks the other box that says yes, I support geometry shaders, then the driver will just advertise. GL 3.30 and GLSL 3.30. So there's just a bunch of boxes that you have to check in your driver, and and there's one left that needs that needs some some finishing. Um, that's right. Yeah. So there's there's yeah. So there's um, Mesa GL version override and Mesa GLSL version override that you can use to tell it no, really, say that you support this other thing and just just do it. Um, so there's, uh, um, we had a, a, a big patch series for sub supporting most of separate shader objects. Um, it wasn't quite complete. There was some, some things that were missed. Um, so I've been working on trying to finish that up. Um, Francisco, somewhere in the room I thought I saw him, has been uh, working on shader atomic counters. He sent out a patch series for that uh, last week, I believe. Um, Matt and a few other people have been working on various parts of uh, GPU Shader 5. Uh, Chris Forbes, way in the back of the room, has been working on ARB Texture Gather. And I'm assuming that other people are working on other stuff, but I don't necessarily know what everyone else is working on. So the feature set of 10.0 will probably be approximately this. Uh, at least that's what we're working on and, and trying really, really hard to, to ship for, for November. So we can kind of look at a little bit of a historical perspective. Um, so Mesa added support for OpenGL 2.0 and 2.1 in the, in the same release um, back in April of 2007. And then it was 2012 when we finally got, got 3.0. Um, so in, in, uh, in 2007, we were just about 2 thirds of a year behind when the spec was released. Um, going by the, the dates on the spec release. So pretty much all of those August dates are GL specs that were released at SIGGRAPH, the August and July dates, and the March dates are ones that were released at, at GDC. Um, so in 2012, we got, in, in February, we got OpenGL 3.0. Um, in February of this year, we got 3.1. So we were three and a half years and, and four-ish years behind. Um, and so if we manage to ship 3.3 uh, and 3.2 here in November, we'll be back to about 3.7 years behind. Um, and the four series, I don't think we've really started planning for. And, and oh god, there's there's a huge huge pile of work for that. <laughs> so who who knows what our what our gap is going to be um, going forward? Um, continuing the the three month cycle, we'll have. Probably Mesa 10.1 in February sometime next year. Um, I have no idea what the, the feature set of that is, and six months is way too far ahead to to, to think about. Um, but what I know is, so there, there's kind of three big difficult features that are part of OpenGL 4.0, and I have not had anyone ask me for that for any of those features. No one has asked me for tessellation shaders. Except now that Pixar is trying to push open subdiv, um, which is an awesome subdivision surface library uh, that makes heavy use of uh, tessellation shaders, um, maybe that will change. Um, nobody has asked for double precision outside of compute shaders. And most people that I talk to don't even know what the hell a shader subroutine is, much less want it. Um, and those are kind of the three 
hard things, but I'm going to talk about that a little bit more in, in the next slide. Um, but everyone wants, compute, wants GL compute shaders. Um, earlier this year, I was at GDC, and, and, and Eric was there too. And in every single talk that people were giving about some game that they had developed, at some point towards the end of the talk, they'd say, we tried to use tessellation shaders. We couldn't figure out how to make that work in our content production pipeline, so we gave up on it. And then we started using compute shaders, and it saved our ass. <laughs> like, I heard that same story seven times from different AAA game developers. So I'm kind of thinking that after we ship 3.3, we're probably going to turn our eye towards compute shaders. Um, but you know, what, what my team does will depend on what our corporate overlords tell us to do, of course. Um, yeah, so that probably means that uh, we'll, if, we, if we do a release in mid-February, that we'll end up making the branch sometime mid-January, you know, three to, three to four weeks uh, ahead. So kind of looking at what future GL versions have, Kind of ignoring the, the few big scary things, there's a lot of stuff that we already support from 4.0 and have supported for quite a while in, in various drivers. Not, not all the drivers support this, this functionality. Oh, and I didn't get in. So draw buffers blend has been in since I think 9.1, but I didn't get that in there. Um, so it's a fairly small set of features, although a couple of them, uh, GP shader FP64 is the double precision support and tessellation shaders. And looks like I missed shader subroutine on the list, but that's, that's also part of 4.0, or kind of a big pile of work. Um, the 4.0 to, to 4.1 step is, is even smaller. It's, um, it's really viewport arrays and being able to use doubles in an additional place. So a really, really small set. And then again, going from 4.1 to 4.2 is uh, basically shader image load store and an extra texture compression format. So it seems like when we do finally get 4.x support, we'll probably go from 3.3 all the way to 4.2 in one in one step or you know maybe across two releases but it's a it's a pretty um, it's a pretty small jump when you look at the the individual pieces of functionality cuz there there were a lot of little things and you know people like to pick up the pieces of low hanging fruit and say ooh that looks fun to, to implement I'll I'll go work on that and you know the patches show up on the mailing list so for our whole whole 4.x picture, and this also misses shader subroutine because I was copy and pasting from my other slides, there's really only four things that are scary amounts of work and then some additional low-hanging fruit. Um, and I think we'll, and then uh, um, compute shaders are added in, in 4.3. So I think that the project is probably in a pretty good position to make it to 4.2 in not too much longer, depending on what people end up d deciding to work on. So this is kind of start working on some of these things. <laughs> okay, so that was, that was, I think that covers everything, the status of the project. Does anyone have any questions or comments? Yeah, so, so we do need a, a crap ton of, of additional tests. There's a bunch of things that, that are implemented that are not supported in, in all drivers or are, you know, maybe not very well supported in, in some of the drivers. Um, but as far as, I, I think this is pretty accurate as far as like the front end implementation work. Um, but yeah, there there is a big, a big testing thing and I think we've been finding over the last year that we spend we end up having about as much human time spent developing tests as developing features <laughs> it's 
testing this stuff adequately is a huge pile of work. <laughs> Um, and that's why we have like 10,000 tests in Piglet now. Yeah. I, someone get him a mic. So do you know the gap between, uh, you know, uh, spec and uh, initialization uh, on Windows or Apple? Oh, um, so right now Apple is shipping uh, OpenGL 3.2. Um, but I keep hearing rumors that in not too much longer they're going to support something dot something, um, you know, some some much more recent version. But you know they operate on their own time frames. Um, the most of the other vendors on Windows support at least four dot two. Um, I think Nvidia has four dot three. I don't think AMD does yet, and I don't know about about four dot four that just just came out. This previous August or July, I guess. Yeah, we have 4.4. You have 4.4. Okay. So the new version of Mac OS comes out. It comes out soon. I think it's slated for end of this year. Uh, it's going to have 4.1 support. Is it 4.1 that they've announced? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So uh, again, we're just barely going to get beat to the next version by Apple. I keep wanting to get ahead of them. <laughs> I was so bummed when, when they shipped 3.2, like right before we shipped 3.0. I wanted, I wanted them to be the last ones with the, <laughs> with the 3 implementation. So, oh well. Uh, okay, anything else? All right. Uh,